Welcome back to the show. Well, those of you who watched the show yesterday know we talked about holiday stress. Mm -hmm. It's so very important this time of year to be thinking about that. Today we're going to be talking about stress and digestive health. How do they fit together? Well, no better person. Where is the co correlation between digestive health and, and stress? Okay, well, a lot of people know that they have symptoms. They might have a headache here or a digestive heartburn here, but a lot of people don't realize it's tied into stress. So there's actually a mechanism, and in order to digest well, you actually need to be in the parasympathetic nervous system. So when you're uh, eating on the run or you're eating at your desk, and if you put your hands on your muscles on your abdominal wall, chances are they're pretty tight. And in that state, your body can't release enough enzymes to start breaking down your food. So this is where you start getting heartburn. 99% of heartburn is related to eating at your desk. Wow. Really? Or eating on the go. Yes. I'm in yeah, trouble. Everybody. I do that every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. So the ideal situation is you just go to a different chair, you know, look out the window, spend the same time eating your lunch, but just focus on relaxing and eating your lunch. So Ooh. that's the first thing. Um, in terms of your lower digestive system, so this is the first thing that starts to get impacted, and then it can actually move down into bloating, gas, all of those other things. Well, you've given us a great sort of checklist. Yes. And we, we told the viewers at home to be yeah. ready for it, because we'll what we'll do maybe is ask you the questions, mm -hmm. and sure. viewers at home, you just have to answer yes or no, okay, whether or not this question applies to you. I'll give you the first exactly. one if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the first question is, do you have difficulties falling asleep or wake frequently through the night, or wake up very early in the morning, have difficulty getting back to sleep? Yes. 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 So again, what happens in that scenario is the adrenal gland gets overstimulated. It pumps out cortisol. Cortisol normally rises about a half an hour after you wake up in the morning and should get, it comes down a little bit after lunch and then it should peter off to get you ready for sleep. But if you're a person that's on the go all the time and maybe just not stopping to rest moments throughout the day, that cortisol is running way too high and it can't fall off enough for you to get into a sleep or it starts rising multiple times throughout the night, and again, you're waking at two o'clock, four o'clock, you know, mm -hmm. et cetera. And not TL, I want you to sleep. put a triple check mark beside <laughs> that one for yourself, because TL is always on the go, let me tell you. All right, the next one is, do you feel refreshed after your sleep in the morning? Yes. Yeah, so when you wake up, you know, it t should take a minute for you to open your eyes. And, and again, your cortisol is going to start to rise, but you should feel like you've had a high quality sleep. What if you don't feel that way? Okay, so again, that's a, that's a positive tick that, again, stress might be playing a positive role in your, or a, uh, it might be impacting your life and that you need to have some support. Okay. All right. Yeah. Check Makes that sense. One for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, do you feel refreshed after sleeping in or taking a nap? Yes. So, again, you know, most people don't get eight hours during the week. Mm -hmm. But a great thing to do is to play catch up. You know, on the weekend, take a little mini nap, or even after lunch, close your eyes for 15 minutes. And if you feel refreshed from that, again, your mechanism of self balancing is working. So, it's a good thing. It's a great thing. Okay. But if you're not feeling refreshed, it means that your core energy because you have your day-to-day -day energy and your reserves of energy it means that your reserves of energy are, is too low and you're just not getting recharged from that little nap your you body don't know wants what more. the nap thing has just <laughs> oh. done for my life i know because yeah. i nap on the weekends all Great. the time and my yeah. wife sort of gives me the gears about it now <laughs> Gonna check that one off, Nancy, if you're watching. All right, next one is, do you feel overwhelmed, have flutters in the stomach or chest? Yes, yes, exactly. So just to give you an example, last week was a super hectic week for myself. I went to the gym at 7 o'clock when they didn't have a 7 o'clock class. Oh, <laughs> whoops. You know, so these things happen. So the idea is when you've got, again, stress is defined as having too much to do, not enough time to do it with a thought of a negative outcome, a dangerous outcome okay. is, is the perception of what you have. Right. But yeah, just feeling overwhelmed. A lot of people don't realize that stress is also feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. 
anxious. And is that kind of an anxiety attack? That it occurs, is. It is. Basically? It is. And, and again, people don't understand what an anxiety attack is. Really what an anxiety attack is, is the body is extremely fatigued and the body's trying to stay awake. So it pumps out lots of adrenaline to try and stay awake. And that adrenaline is just too much for your system. And you start getting all the symptoms of, again, heart palpations, anxiety, flutters, wow. etc. Okay, yep. well, this one is, uh, you can go ahead and put your check right now, <laughs> All right. and I will too. Do you have difficulties sitting and relaxing? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean, Tina? Oh, well, we both do, right? I mean, I just can't sit and, and turn my mind off, yeah. ever. Yeah, Ever. so again, the idea is the body has this natural check system in which obviously you do need rest. And if you're on the go, restless, your muscles twitching, you're on the go all the time, again, the body's not getting as recharged as it can. So you want to balance that. If you've got that personality style, you'd be a great individual to have regular, again, in our stress process, we talk about prevention and working prophylactically instead of, or, or um, instead of being reactive being proactive so you just put in regular massages mm -hmm. once once a week or once a month depending on you know what's happening and the intensity of your life or regular scheduled visits to the Nordic Spa or you know again <laughs> I like it there. I like where you're going on that one yeah. <laughs> love it there yeah. all right next uh, do you have heartburn bloating gas diarrhea or constipation yep so again if you've got all those by the way you're in big trouble <laughs> So again, that follows the stress reaction. It is just, again, people are too used to having a symptom here and not making the connection. But again, it is a, a connective pathway that occurs. And so you get digestive symptoms from this pathway. Last one, 30 seconds left. Yep. Do you crave carbohydrates or sweets? This exasper exacerbates yes. it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What people don't realize is when you're hungry, you may potentially be overly fatigued and the body's looking for fast fuel to try and gain energy. So you're craving sugars and carbohydrates because of that. Okay, so I've got four checks. How are you doing? I checked them You all. just checked them all off. <laughs> you want more information, visit www.optihealth.ca. Thank you very much Great. for being here. Thanks Always a pleasure.